Since the brutal murder of Dave Garrett six months ago, Parsons Hammonds has exerted every effort to learn who is the head of the protectors. Tonight at his gospel meeting, he has promised to disclose the man's identity and turn him over to the law, and thus put an end to an organization that has been terrorizing and murdering our citizens. Plenty well, strong lead, isn't it, Parson? Aren't you just asking for trouble? Somebody must take the bull by the horns. Well, why not let some of the other men do it? Who, for instance? Sheriff Kramer, Mr. Bradley of the bank, or Mr. McClure? Why, there's a score of them that could do it. Your father thought it was his duty to lead the way. Unfortunately, he was killed. But what he started has to be completed. Once we get the ball rolling, Betty, everybody will fall in line. I hope you're right. You can count on me, Parson. Curly's with you, too, ain't you? You bet, to the last ditch. That's good. I'll answer it. Courier office. For you, Parson. Thanks. Parson Hammond speaking. You're stirring up too much trouble in Miller's Flats, Parson. Who is speaking? Oh, the Protective Association. That's right. And I'm notifying you to pull your freight. I'm staying right here in Miller's Flats. Please don't do anything foolish. They can't frighten me. I'm listening. Light out peaceable and nobody will lay a finger on you. But you get bulk in, print that article you've just written, and you'll go out in a pine box. You can't get anywhere trying to bluff me. Start the press, Curly. Come on, Jerry, we got work to do. Okay. He's in court. All about the big meat. Hey, Bert. Same as usual again? Nothing right now. Is McClure in his office? Yeah. You see this? Just finished reading it. This town's a powder cave. With the parson holding the match. Yeah, but the big fellow will never let him set it off, Mike. How'll he stop him? Well, your guess is as good as mine. Well, that means another killing. Maybe. You fellas don't seem to realize that folks around here are still riled up over Dave Garrett being found full of lead. They'll settle down as soon as the Parsons taught to behave. I don't like it. Getting soft? The Parsons are a friend of mine. <laughs> if he knows as much as he says he does, friendship will be the least of your worries. Hiya, Doyle. Hiya. Late, ain't you? Yeah. The boys been meeting up with some opposition. What kind of opposition? Oh, quite a few of them kicked over the traces today. Wouldn't pay, so we had to spend a little time with them. Who are they? Names are all listed there. You'll see them when you check the receipts. Give any particular reason? They all give you the same one. The parson? Yeah. taking the text of my sermon from the last book in the New Testament. In this book, we read of the four horsemen of the apocalypse, imaginary men on gigantic mythical horses who rode roughshod over the land, spreading war, pestilence, famine, and death. Out of the pages of the past, these four horsemen have descended upon our community in the guise of friends and neighbors. But this time, they call themselves protectors. The leader of these men has professed friendship, not only for me, but for a lot of you. He is in this gathering tonight. And I feel it my duty to disrobe these men and bring them before the bar of justice.
You the new parson, mister? Why, are you expecting one? Yeah, I guess so. What's the matter with him? He ain't here no more. Where'd he go? He was dry gulched. Just like my dad. Was your dad killed? Yep. Why? They was fighting the protectors. The protectors? Who are they? Nobody knows. But they sure run things in this town. Hiya, Jerry. Hello. Who was your dad? Dave Garrett. He owned the Courier. It's a newspaper. Me and my sister run it now, but we ain't doing so good. And your name is Jerry Garrett, eh? Yep. Gosh, mister, I wish you was the parson. Why? Because you don't look like you'd be scared of anything. Well, aren't there any other jobs in this town? Say, mister, you aren't a blacksmith, are you? Maybe. We ain't got one. <laughs> yes, you have. The best in the business. Gosh, that's great. Come on over to the shop. Curly will make you sign, and Sis will give you a write-up in the paper. Fine, we'll go along. Come on, fella. Morning, Miss Garrett. I notice you're behind in your payments to the association. Paper isn't making any money. I can't pay you. Mind if I take a look? Don't you dare touch that money. Come that's on. mine. I'll lay off. That goes with the association. You're a stranger in town, aren't you? Yes, but I... Uh... He's the new blacksmith, Betty. He's a humdinger. He'll show the protectors where to get off if they get tough with him. You'd better help Curly. He has a lot of work to do. You betcha. So long. So long, old timer. That's the second time I heard that youngster mention protectors. What does he mean? Who are you and where do you come from? I thought that question wasn't asked around these parts. Women ask it everywhere. Well, my name is Tim Hayes. I just rode up from the border. Why don't you ride on? Well, because I'm the sort of bird that's always getting into peculiar situations. And once in them, I generally stay. I don't want any help. All I want you to do is to leave Miller's Flats. <laughs> well, I'm sorry, ma'am, but I feel I'm obliged to stay. looking place you have here. Yeah, I just opened up this morning. I know that, but have you joined the Protective Association yet? No, why? Well, if you want to stay in business, you'll have to join. It'll cost you $50 a month. <laughs> For what? Well, uh, well, let's just call it uh, protection. I don't need any protection. No, a lot of people around here thought that, but they changed their mind. Now, don't get me wrong. I'm not looking for trouble. But if you are, you came to the right place. Oh, you're one of those smart hombres, huh?
strangers generally coming into a new town get their welcome, but this is a little more than I bargained for. Yeah, well, what started it? Well, those fellows are trying to hold me up for protection money. Yeah, well, it's time the citizens of this town got together and did something about that. Well, what's holding them? Well, nobody's willing to take the lead. Why? In the past, it hasn't proved to be healthy. Well, is there any reason why we can't hold a meeting and talk things over? Yeah, but where would you hold it? There's the gospel tent over there. We could have a meeting there Sunday morning. Yeah. 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 Well, will you get some handbills printed then and have them distributed? You bet, and I'll scatter them all over the county. Yeah. Just a minute, Hayes. Sure is my name. How do you do? I know that the protectors are uh, gunning for you already. You know they're a pretty powerful outfit. Do you think it's wise to stir them up? <laughs> you know the old saying, the bigger they are, the harder they fall. <laughs> and that's the truth, too. You coming to that meeting? Yeah, sure, I'll be there. Well, if the citizens of this town will get together, then maybe we can get something done. You may be right. I hope you are. Did you recognize any of that outfit? Well, one of them's the one you threw out of the courier office. I never saw the rest of them before. Are you hurt much? No, I just skinned up a little bit, that's all. <laughs> You're lucky. Tell me, where did Parson Hammond make his headquarters around here? Well, about five miles out of town on the Miller Ranch. Thanks. Want to give me a hand here? Sure, you bet. Well, if the Parson had anything on the big fellow, he kept it someplace beside here.
the shooting. I surprised a couple of fellas trying to ransack the house. Well, let's go get them. Now oh, they're more valuable alive. What are you doing here? Well, I followed you out from town. I have no idea you'd run into trouble. Well, I'm glad you did. <laughs> Looks to me like you're going to have to sleep with one eye open. I'm going to sleep with them both open. Come on. However, I found out at the Miller Ranch the other day that there's some people who run otherwise. And I just want to say for their benefit, if they happen to be in this gathering, that although the good book says, if a man strikes thee on the cheek, thou shalt turn the other, it doesn't say anything about what you if he tries to take another wallop at you. I'm a stranger to all of you people. I've only been in town a week. But that's been time enough for these grafters that call themselves your protectors to catch up with me. How do we know you're not one yourself? I might ask you the same question. How do I know you're not? <laughs> that's pinning on you right, Gail. Yeah, I guess I spoke out of turn. Citizens have been terrorized and forced to pay tribute to an organization that claims to be able to put a stop to the losses you've suffered. Now, if that's the case, they must be the ones responsible. Therefore, it's nothing but a case of blackmail, pure and simple. The people of this country won't stand for it. The day will never come when we have to pay for the privilege of working and earning a livelihood. Some of you at times have refused to pay tribute. Consequently, you've seen your buildings burned and your cattle rustled. Experience has taught you that single-handed you can't fight this organization. So the time has come to strike back with the only kind of justice these men understand. Six-gun justice. Sit down, there's no danger. As I was saying, folks, they've already made one slip. Parson Hammond discovered it and it cost him his life. The same thing happened to Dave Garrett. Both these men were just about to name the leaders of the Protective Association when they were shot down. Therefore, they must have had conclusive evidence. And if they found it, so can we. Well, how about us joining up with Mr. Hayes and teaching those protectors a lesson? You can count on me. That's a boy! cattle you rounded up from market has disappeared into thin air. This is the Protective Association. That's right. You know, nothing like that ever happens to our members. Oh, you're ready to join, huh? Well, that's fine. Our representative will call on you in a day or two. Goodbye, Mr. Brown. And thank you. What to do? Well, I'm sorry you can't see your way to cooperate with us. I'd like to, but I'm afraid. Well, it'd help, Betty, if you'd let us use your newspaper to sort of rouse the people up. 
have you found out anything definite? No, but if I can make him think I have, why, so much the better. Hey. There's the man that shot him. Is that right? Did you shoot this man? Yes, in self-defense. We only have your word for it. I wouldn't try that if I were you. And don't forget that I'm still around and backing up Hayes to the finish. That man was trying to shoot him from around the corner of that building. Well, your word's good enough for me, Curly. He evidently was trying to settle a little grudge of his own. It didn't work, and that was his hard luck. Well, I'm glad it was a personal grudge he was trying to settle. I'd hate to think he was working for somebody else. You're making dangerous talk. I'm always ready to back up whatever I say. I'll see you later. Okay. Something I can do for you? Yes, I'd like a little information. Well, what kind of information do you want? Well, you're acquainted all around this part of the country, aren't you? Mm-hmm. Anyone deposited any big amount of cash lately? Well, that's a question that I hardly care to answer. You see, the bank's bound by a code of ethics, just as a doctor, a lawyer, any other professional man. You're quite an artist, aren't you? Oh, that's just a foolish habit. Would you mind telling me if you're paying for protection to this association? Well, confidentially, same boat as the others. These payments are all made in cash, aren't they? That's right. Well, they must keep the money somewhere. That's why I asked the question I did. If you could see your way clear to answer it, why, well, I'd appreciate it. And of course, you know it's going no farther. Well, I'll be frank. We have no large accounts. The businessmen are being bled to death. If this keeps on, there's no telling what will happen. Hello, Sheriff. Hello, Sheriff. Hello, Bradley. Hello, Tim. Did you find any sign of them? No. I've been riding for days. Everybody barking at my heels to do something. They seem to think I can round them up alone. Well, from now on, you're going to get help. We've formed a vigilante committee to lend you a hand. Well, I'm not in favor of that. You wanted help, didn't you? Yes, but not that kind. Mob rule is never satisfactory. It's too good a cover-up for men apparently working for the law to break it. Mr. Bradley's pretty busy. Suppose you and I go over to the office and see if we can't work out something. All right, but I still don't like it. We'll let you know later what we decide. Be sure you do. Hello, Sheriff. Hello, Curly. Say, I don't know what's the matter with Betty. I turned. She doesn't seem to want to talk back. She acts well, like... Well, she's it. all right. She's just worried, that's all. Say, who's that fellow standing down there by the mesa? Oh, that's Slim Doyle. I've had my eye on him for some time. He's one of the collectors for that protective association. Well, I'll slap him right in the hose guard. That wouldn't do any good. He'd be out in ten minutes on bail, and you know it. Now, if you could just book him on some serious charge, something like, uh... Oh, murder, for instance. Did he kill somebody? I don't know. Say, have you any posters for wanted men over at the office? Oh, sure. Let's go over and look at them. Well, what are you driving at? You'll see. Here's one that'll do. Take a look at that, Sheriff. Uh, this fellow was caught and hung over a year ago. Then there's no danger of his coming back to bother us. Us? Yes, yeah, sir. So ain't it about time you came clean with me? <laughs> well, I suppose it is. United States Marshal. That's right. That's funny. You have the same name the parson had. The parson was my father. Your father? He wrote me he was expecting trouble. 
That's why I came here. Too bad you didn't get here in time. What do you want me to do with this? Well, you better take that and put it with the others to make them in handy. Come on, Charlie. So you're going under the name of Slim Doyle now, eh? What are you talking about? I've bumped into you two or three times in town, and I've wondered where I'd seen you before. You ain't seen me nowhere. I got you now. Brad Newberry, and you're worth $5,000. You're talking to the wrong party, mister. My name's Doyle, Slim Doyle. Not so fast. You're Brad Newberry, and you're wanted for murder up in Lone Pine. Hey, Mac, come here a minute. What's the matter? Tell the smart guy who I am, will you? Well, you're Slim Doyle, as far as I know. He's Brad Newberry, and he's wanted for murder. So I'm turning him over to the sheriff. I reckon you... I'll take care of this. Maybe you do as you like in your own range, buddy. But in the Macy, you walk like I say. And this time, it's out. Now, that's the second time you've tried that. The next time, I'll begin to think you mean it. All right, get going. Sheriff, take a prisoner. Brad Newberry, wanted for murder. Brad Newberry, huh? What's this all about? You know I'm Slim Doyle. Keep your shirt on. I want to see if I have anything on anybody by that name. No, nothing there. That's what I tried to tell this guy. Don't be in such a hurry. I got a whole desk full of them things. Wait till I take a look. one. Brad Newberry. And it looks mighty like you. Oh, I know a hundred fellows look like that. Yeah, but this one says you killed a rancher named Riley the night of July 11, three years ago. Where was you then? How do I know? Where was you? Why, I was a dog. Uh, he was over at the printing office playing poker. We had a big game and stayed up all night. Ain't that right, Sheriff? That's right. You bet. Now, what do you got to say for yourself? I ain't talking. I want a lawyer. Got any lawyers in this town? No. We had one, but he drunk himself to death. I'll have to hold you till I hear from the marshal at Lone Pine. I'll send a wire off as soon as one of the boys rides over to the railroad. Sheriff's got a nice little boarding house here. You're gonna like it. Come on. Well, what are you gonna do with him? Keep him out of circulation for a while. See who worries about him. The whole town's going crazy, Sheriff. Slim's the topic of conversation everywhere. Unless he talks and talks fast, I'm afraid they're going to make an example of him. Well, it won't be long before Slim is swinging in the breeze. Open the cell door and give me a break, will you? I can't do that as long as you're fool enough to take the blame for somebody else. Hello? We've got your kid brother. You've got my brother? Yeah. Tell Hayes we're ready to make a deal. The kid for Doyle. That's right. I'll call back in 15 minutes for his answer.
It won't take them long to bust that door down. All we can do is try to stop them. Give me my gun and turn me loose. Uh, that would be violating my oath of office. Well, as long as you won't talk, you better start praying, Doyle. Hey, wait a minute. I'll talk. I'll tell you everything if you let me out of here. Kim, Sheriff, they've got Jerry. Who's got Jerry? The protectors, don't you understand? Think they'll never be able to see him again unless you release Doyle. Yeah. And if you don't think they mean it, just keep me here. Shut up, you. Are you sure they've got your brother? Yes, we haven't a minute to lose. They want an answer in 15 minutes. Tim, we can't let anything happen to him. Well, you run along back to the office. I want to talk to the sheriff, and I'll be right over. Any calls yet? No, not yet. Wait. I'll answer. Hello. You haven't convinced me yet that they have the youngster. Yeah? Well, suppose I let you talk to him. All right. Bring him the kid. They're going to let me talk to him. Come on, son. Somebody wants to talk to you on the telephone. Tell him who you are. Hello? This is Jerry Garrett. Hello there, Jerry. How are you? Fine. I ain't afraid. And listen, Tim, don't let him put anything over on you. I know every one of them. All right, you satisfied? All right. It's a deal. We'll release Doyle. Yeah, well, I'm glad to see you showing some sense. Right. mistake by ever letting this kid see us. What are we going to do with him? Put him in the other room. If everything goes along according to schedule, we'll let him go. All right, boys, get everything out of here. Don't leave nothing to show we've ever been in here. We're turning to our loose. I don't play that way. You play any way I say. Now, unlock that cell door. Nothing do it. Stay away from that door. I said we're turning to our loose. And I say we ain't. Back there, get on him as fast as you can, get out of town. Thanks, pal. Never mind that, I didn't do it for you. All right, you can get up now. Sorry for that one, all right. I told you you would. I sure hope you haven't made any mistakes. No, I don't think I have. If things work out the way I figure it, we'll soon know who's at the bottom of this whole business. that kid. Yeah? Yeah. Tim Hayes shot the sheriff to get me out of jail. I figured that would stop him. It's getting too hot for me around these parts. I'm heading for the border as fast as Nag will take me there. Well, Gail and McClure I want to see you first. Well, okay.
still think you're right, Tim? The whole country's covered. There's nothing to worry about. Sheriff's office. It's Brown. Good. What's that? Slim Doyle was met by two other men at Rocky Point, and they're all three headed north? Couldn't be better. You wait there till Tim Hayes comes along. Now you phone everybody in that vicinity and have them on the lookout. I'll slip out the back way, and remember, you are dead. because we were afraid you'd break and talk. Talk? Not me. I ain't the talking kind. No? What about this? Oh, Hayes was just trying to put something over on us. Honest. I didn't say anything. I ain't lying. I didn't talk. I tell you, I never said a word. I'd die before I'd squeal. Wait, Gail. Don't, Gail. Gail! All right, McClure, get the kid. The kid's made a getaway. All right, boys, get this stuff out of here pronto. Couple of you get rid of him.
Did you see anything of Jerry? No, I didn't get that close. Come on. going with us is too dangerous. You get on one of these horses and get back to town. Your sister's worried about you now. Look, let him have your horse. You can ride double. Mm, all right. That's the place. boys and surround the place. Curly, you come with me. Well, I guess that's everything. things. I've got to go into town.
your hands in the air and turn around slow. What's wrong? Lots of shooting, Tim. There's the man you've been looking for. You'll find those saddlebags for the cash. All right, folks, clear the room. Get back to work. The way you demand money, you'd think you were one of the protectors. <laughs> The only difference is the town people are now collecting it and spending it properly. Ladies and gentlemen of Miller Flat, it gives me great pleasure as treasurer of our organization to give you a report on the monies collected and dispersed. What does this purse mean, Curly? Well, that's money you spend. Going to tell them about the two bucks you spent for what you said were refreshments? Yeah. Now listen, Momoa. Refreshments are a necessary evil. It's the first time I ever knew evil came in bottles. I always thought it was snakes. <laughs> Quiet. Now you keep still. I gotta practice. Ladies and gentlemen, a miller gives me the great.